Hi, Dave Baring here, Technical Director at TriStar, and welcome to video number four. And now we're going to talk about TriStar solutions to why metal bearings fail. Uh, you've seen some pictures here of our, uh, our types of bearings that we offer, and uh, we're going to talk now about how our materials can counter virtually everything that we talked about before uh, in terms of metal bearing failures. The first thing you need to know is that uh, everything that we do and make in TriStar is self-lubricating. So if the number one reason for bearing failures is lubrication failures, we're one step ahead of the game, I'd say. And so we're going to talk a, a bit about why self-lubricating bearings make sense. Um, TriStar offers a number of different options when it comes to self-lubricating materials. Uh, in fact, it's, it's dozens and dozens and dozens of options. But uh, we're going to key on a few that uh, are probably the most predominant in our staple of products. And that's, first of all, the Rulon materials. Uh, Rulon is a product that's been around since the early 50s. And uh, if you've ever viewed any of our other videos, we talk extensively about Rulon and uh, what makes it special and uh, why it is uh, the best product in the market in terms of self-lubricating uh, PTFE based materials. Uh, second is our CJ and our FCJ line. These are our filament wound products that are really designed for high loads, um, both oscillating and full rotary and linear applications. And then third is our UltraComp product which is a family of laminate wound composites utilizing graphite, uh, PTFE, and moly uh, as self-lubricating media in the product. Uh, our tri-steels, our metal back bearings, and we, again it's a whole family of products that uh, the liners run the gamut from floor polymers and uh, acetals uh, to even bimetal products that uh, offer a number of different options of metal liners um, for lubricated uh, applications such as crank cases and uh, gearboxes and so, and so forth. And then finally, our engineering and HPM grades. Uh, this would be materials um, like some of the traditional engineering grade bearing materials like Delrin, uh, the Herbalite polyester materials, um, uh, materials like Peak, uh, Torlon, and then getting up uh, into the really high-end materials, polyimides, and even the PBI Celazole. So all of these are bearing grade materials. All of these have self-lubricating uh, characteristics, and that's what really makes all of this key. So what do we have to do to determine whether or not these types of products can replace a rolling element bearing? First of all, we have five questions that you have to ask yourself. Um, first of all, what's your load in PSI? Uh, we need to figure out if the application is going to exceed the load potential of a material. And again, because we have so many different options, uh, there's a lot of loads that we can carry. There's significant loads that we can carry. So don't be scared off um, thinking that a metal bearing will always carry more load than a plastic bearing because that's not necessarily true. Second of all is what the speed, what's your speed? Um, and that's surface feet per minute. If there's anything that can kill a self-lubricating uh, non-metallic bearing like ours, uh, it is if the speed gets so excessive that it's generating a heat that cannot be handled by our materials. Keep in mind that our materials are all plastic in nature, so they are going to be insulated. So we have to pay a lot more attention to speed than uh, you would have to necessarily uh, with a metal bearing. Uh, what's the normal operating temperature? Is your normal daily run going to be 125 degrees um, or is it minus 40? You know, what is your normal operating? What's the maximum and minimum operating temperature? This is important because we are dealing with press fits and running clearances and because again plastics um, uh, have thermal expansion issues that have to be dealt with, we need to be sure that we're covering the press fits for the full range of your of your application 
and being sure that our design um, maximizes the performance and utilizes the best running tolerances between the shaft and the, and the idea of the bearing. And then finally, what's the environment? Uh, with so many different options that we have, we can operate in just a variety of environments. Gases, fluids, cold temperatures down to cryogenics, hot temperatures up to 800 degrees Fahrenheit, um, clean room situations, um, FDA, USDA, 3A, all kinds of different regulatory situations. So um, these five questions really will help us guide you to determine whether or not your rolling element bearing can be replaced. If you look at the big picture view of our solutions, I think the thing that we need to understand is once we have all your parameters, uh, we then have to look at the hardware considerations because we want to be sure that, again, because we're dealing with insulated materials, we want to be sure that we're not dealing with uh, hardware situations that are unmanageable. And that can be anything from tolerances to uh, the thermal issues that can take place between the hardware and the plastic materials. Um, but again, we have so many different options in material that we can really solve the majority of the problems that you might be misapplying a rolling element bearing. And that's really what we want you to understand and take away from this little four video series is that there are solutions. And the fact, as I mentioned at the beginning, that 50% plus of bearing failures in rolling element industry is from lubrication failure. We're talking about a whole product line here that is self-lubricating. We don't want grease. We don't want oil because just as it will damage a metal rolling element bearing, we put grease in any of these materials and it starts to get contamination, it's gonna be the same problem. We're gonna cut it to shreds. So our main focus is to work with you on picking the right material to handle the loads, to handle the speeds, to handle the environment, to handle the temperatures. And as long as we have all that information up front, um, we feel very confident that TriStar has a solution for you. So I invite you to watch some of our other videos. I think it's important for you to, to get the big picture, understand about friction, understand about thermal expansion, uh, understand about the design and, and the use of, of these materials in uh, plane bearing applications. Uh, we're not gonna be the salvation for everything. We, we just know that up front. Um, there are bearing applications that our products will not solve. So. Um, but again, if we have these five parameters, we understand what those are, we feel very comfortable that we'll be able to come up with a, a solution for you. So go to our resources, um, which you went to to get these videos, and uh, be sure and look at all the other opportunities to learn um, how to apply plastics in plane bearing scenarios. And I invite you to uh, check out our white paper that's uh, coming online very shortly. And um, that talks specifically about plane bearing design. And uh, if I say so, do say so myself, it's probably one of the most uh, complete uh, pictures of why plane bearings work and how to best utilize them in today's world of industry and technology. So we appreciate you watching us and um, again, Check out our resources. I, I think you'll be uh, happy that you did. And if you have any questions or um, applications you'd like to talk to us about, please uh, contact us through the website, through the Ask the Expert, or um, just call us at any of the branches and we'll be happy to direct you to the engineering department. Thanks again for watching. We appreciate it and uh, hope this has been valuable to you.